And so I talked about this in a video on the Conscious Cast a while ago, and this is probably the best advice I've ever heard. This might be the best advice I've ever heard about a relationship, which is... What's up, my friends? Welcome back to another episode of the Jason Sklor Show. Back again in the studio, here again, alone, once again. Yes, I have no friends. We're well aware. Ha, 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 ha. Anyways, we are back, of course, answering some questions about relationships. But before I get started, I wanted to bring up a quick story that I heard. It was not really a question, but it was more so just something that I was talking about with one of the students at Central. And they had brought up the fact that their boyfriend hadn't ever posted them on their Instagram or on any social medias. And she was like, like, what the fuck? You know, I post them all the time on my Snapchat story on this and on that. Like, why doesn't he want to post me? Like he should post me. And then she was getting into all this bullshit on how she assumed that it was because he didn't want other girls to see her and then not hit him up or so that he can continue doing his cheating or whatever the fuck she was accusing him of. And I know this kid and I was like, And I know for a fact, I mean, granted, I guess I don't know for a fact, but I know damn well he's not fucking around with any other girls and he's not doing it out of any reason to get attention or anything like that. And what I had realized was, was that almost all really healthy relationships aren't publicized all the time. Right. Because we see all the time of people saying, well, you should post me in your Snapchat or you should put in your bio my initials with a heart or whatever the fuck you're saying. But the reality is, is the healthy relationships are not between the people that constantly post each other and try to appear happy online and on social media. Truly happy couples are between two people that prioritize making each other happy and not looking like they're making each other happy by posting them on social media. Because when you're flexing your partner and you're trying to show off how happy and fulfilled and how good your relationship is... All you're flexing is that you're wasting your time trying to appear a certain way rather than actually living a certain way. Because healthy relationships are between two people who are truly self-confident. And if you're confident enough, you're confident enough not to give a fuck if your partner's posting you on their Instagram so that other girls or other guys will know that they're taken, right? Truly confident people don't care if other people know that they're in a relationship. Truly confident people don't care whether or not their partner is perceived in a way if they're in a relationship or not. It doesn't mean they want them to go out and cheat on them. What it means is that they're confident enough to A, trust their partner to not cheat on them or respond to DMs that are where people are just trying to, you know, slide in. But two, they're in a place where it doesn't matter if they do. They're confident. It doesn't matter if the most famous celebrity hits up this person. They're in a relationship where they fully trust them. And so back to the story, what I was getting at was, was I had to explain to her, I'm like, listen, all of this need and desire for you to have your boyfriend posting you on your, his Instagram is simply because you're insecure and want other girls to back off because you're afraid of losing him. But the reason you're afraid of losing him is because you're insecure. Because if you were truly confident with yourself, you'd be okay without a relationship. And the threat of another woman hitting him up, hitting him up isn't going to threaten you because you're confident. If you think you're the shit and you know you're the shit, you're irreplaceable and you feel that way. It's not that you won't feel maybe threatened or whatever, but it's more so like, hey, even if he does like her more, Like, so be it, you know? I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody that wants somebody else anyways. But you're confident, which attaches itself in the form of truly confident people have good relationships because they would be okay alone. Because truly confident people love themselves. And when you love yourself, you'd be okay without a relationship. Is it nice? Yes. Would it hurt if it ended? Absolutely. But you'd be okay alone. So the thought of somebody, you know, going out and trying to hit on your girlfriend or your boyfriend doesn't scare you because you're like, listen, A, if they do something about it and actually cheat on me, the trash took itself out. But B, I am confident in myself and I trust my partner. So what the fuck is there to be worried about? If they cheated me, they cheated me. The trash took itself out. I'm confident and I love myself enough to be okay alone. Or I just trust the person and it's all good. I hope that makes sense. So I ended up telling her, I was like, hey, listen, I'm just going to try and explain this to you in the nicest way possible. But 
if you're in a relationship where you can't handle the fact that your partner is just, it's not that they don't post you because they don't like you, but it's like if your partner just, you know, isn't trying to flex you on their story 24 seven and let everybody and anybody know that they're in a relationship and that bothers you, that's a you problem. That's a you problem. And if you're with somebody that you think should be posting because there's X, Y, and Z reason why you don't trust them, why are you in a relationship with somebody you don't trust? If you're in a relationship with somebody that you don't trust and they're actually not a trustworthy person and they're actually going to cheat on you, what the fuck use is it for them to post you on their story? You're putting a Band-Aid on a bullet wound. You can't trust them. It's not like you being posted on their story is going to prevent them from cheating if they're a cheater. And not for nothing, I would go to say most people that are in relationships where people cheat, like, are super low key. Like, they flex on their story, I love you so much. Oh my God, you're the best. And they try and post and flaunt and flex how happy they are with their partner because they're really not. They're really not. Right? Why are the most insecure people the same people that try and post their ass on social media and try to make their lives look way better on social media and try to appear like they're the happiest human beings alive online? It's because they're not happy. People who are truly happy and confident aren't always going around trying to flex how happy and confident they are. Right? Same thing in a conversation. The people who are always trying to flex and be like, dude, I fucked this bitch last weekend. Look how hot she is. Or dude, look at how much money I made. Or trying to flex whatever are the people that are flexing because they feel the need to fill that gap. Because people who always go out of their way to let you know how good they're doing are the same people who are not doing good. Because the people who are actually doing good feel no desire to go out and outwardly express how amazing they're doing and how great they're killing it at life. The people that are killing it at life ask you how you're doing, are trying to get you to a place where you're killing it at life. And you need to spend more time with those people. And if you're not, and if you're always spending your time with people that are always egotistical, always trying to flex their achievements, always trying to flex this and that, you're spending time with the wrong people. And chances are you are developing yourself and being influenced by that person in a way where you're going to become more and more like that person too, whether you realize it or not. So the first question I got is, when does a relationship become exclusive? It's a good question. It's a fair question. Um, usually it's the woman that's asking this question because the guys usually know because they're the guys are typically the ones to make it official. But the way you know if a relationship is finally exclusive is when you say we're together is <laughs> by asking the person, are we exclusive? Brilliant. Whoa. a fucking thought that if you were to ask the question and receive the actual answer that you'd figure out if you're in an exclusive relationship or not the problem is is not figuring out if you're in an exclusive relationship the problem is you don't want to know because you likely already know the answer that's the truth it's not difficult to understand whether you're in a relationship or not where it's exclusive and you're not talking to other people because you're in a monogamous relationship and you're not going around and fucking around with other people or flirting with other people that's not hard to find out. How do you know? How do you know? You ask. You have that conversation. Why is this even a question? I know why it's a question. The reason it's a question is because you don't want to have the conversation. And the reason you usually don't want to have the conversation is because you already know, because maybe you've had some sort of version of the conversation or whatever, you already know that this person, typically this guy is going to tell you, no, nah, I don't want a relationship right now. Sorry. Because you know that that's going to hurt your feelings. So really the question you're asking is, how do I have that conversation? Or I don't know what you're asking, but it's not that. You don't need to know, how do I know if the relationship is exclusive? You need to figure out how to have that difficult conversation. You need to figure out how to bring yourself to the point to where you're going to allow yourself to rip off the Band-Aid and feel the pain of the rejection that you know you're going to feel or probably feel when you do have the difficult conversation and they break it to you saying, yeah, I don't really want a relationship. I, I know I kind of alluded to that earlier, but, you know, we can still be friends. You don't want that. I know that. And it sucks. But you know what sucks even more? Staying where you are, developing even stronger feelings, and then getting hurt down the road when you really, really know. When it's blaring in your face. When you find out he slept with somebody else or whatever. So, to answer the question, 
if you want to figure out whether or not you're in an exclusive relationship, you ask the person, are we exclusive? It's not a difficult thing to understand. What's difficult is facing your emotions and facing the fact that you're probably not in an exclusive relationship. And if you don't want to settle for one, that's fine. Don't settle for one. But don't live in denial. Don't live avoiding the difficult conversation because you know it's going to be painful if you're not in an exclusive relationship. Don't avoid it because pain avoided is pain multiplied. It doesn't just go away. You can't fucking sweep it under the rug. You already are where you are. If you're already in a position where you need to ask the question, am I exclusive? Then that pain is already inevitable. It's only going to get worse the longer you wait. There, it's inevitable. It's going to, like where you are now, the only thing that's going to make it worse is by staying doing the same exact thing that you're already doing, which is avoiding that conversation. But make your own choices. I'm not going to tell you what you should do or shouldn't do. I'm just telling you what's going to help you feel the least amount of pain. That's all I'm saying. Next question. To me, honestly, like this, there's a bunch of different things I could say. Um, granted, I'm only 21, so. 21, can you do something for me? I'm only 21, so like I can only give you what I'm assuming is the best advice from what I've learned from other people like Matthew Hussey and Ed Milet and people that talk a lot about relationships. But the answer is to become the type of person that you would want in a relationship, right? And so I talked about this in a video on the Conscious Cast a while ago, which is, and this is probably the best advice I've ever heard. This might be the best advice I've ever heard about a relationship, which is write down anything and everything you could ever want in a partner all the values, all the physical traits, literally everything you could think of. The list could be hundreds of things long. Then go back through and check off the ones that are absolute make or breaks, right? Whether it's honesty, loyalty, or whatever it is for you, check off those things. And then in order to get that person, become those traits, become those make or breaks, be that person. If you want, if it make or break for you is somebody that's physically fit, Become physically fit. You're not going to be able to attract a person into your life who's in good shape if you don't take care of yourself. It's just not going to happen. You're not going to have a good relationship with somebody that's honest and loyal to you if you're not honest and loyal. You can't be a hypocrite. And the way that the universe works is on a spiritual level, you cannot attract that type of person into your life. And if you want to think about it logically, you wouldn't settle for... Like if you have a really nice body and you really think that going to the gym is valuable and important, you're not going to get into a relationship with somebody that's massively overweight and, over, and out of shape. You're not going to do that. Not because you're fat phobic, but because that's your standard. That's something you value highly. That's how the attraction works. But it applies to everything. It applies to every value. You're not going to be able to attract somebody that's honest and loyal and kind and respectful and works on themselves and is diligent and, and does all these things that you think are so important if you don't already embody those traits yourself. I hope that makes sense. So in order to find, to answer the question, the best way to find the one, the best way to find the person you would have a good relationship with is to figure out the kind of person you would want to have as a partner and then embody those traits. Become that person and then you will attract that person, which is hard. This is the same reason why most relationships suck because people settle because people don't work on themselves. So therefore the good people aren't going to settle for the shitty people. It's just not going to happen. It's not. So that's my advice. And, and as a side note to me, I think that there are just too many people. And again, uh, this might be a hot take for a lot of people, but to me, I just don't really believe in the one like I do, but I don't in the sense where I don't believe that there's only one person you can have an amazing and beautiful relationship with and share all these great times with and, and, and settle down with and marry that is the right person for you. But I do believe that there is the one in the sense where like you kind of pick the one. Right. But I think that honestly, like if you met enough people, you're going to find that there's a lot of people that you would be very, very compatible with. But I think this is a helpful thing to understand because a lot of times we're in a relationship and we expect everybody else to be of complete unattraction to your partner and be completely unattractive to you spiritually, mentally, physically, because you already have the one. So like since you found the one, no one else is going to be attractive to you in any way. And you're going to really fuck yourself up because you're going to be like, oh, I can't find them attractive or I can't connect well with this person or I can't have a deep meaningful relationship with somebody of the opposite sex because I already found the one like that's not the case and a lot of times people get tripped up with that because of their preconceived idea of how the one works as if you're not going to be compatible with many 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 other people regardless of their gender regardless of the sexual attraction regardless of any of those things 
but that's just my two cents. The next question is, how do I get my partner to make more time for me? And it's a very good question. And it's a complicated question because balance isn't the same for everybody. And this is the underlying issue of the entire thing. And this is extremely relatable for me because of who I am, because I just like to work. It's just what I enjoy doing. That's just the way I'm wired. I'm not saying that as a flex. I'm not saying that to blow smoke up my ass, but anytime I'm getting into a relationship or anytime I'm, I'm talking to someone, that's the thing that I need to keep in mind. And the only time I've ever had a healthy relationship was when I was with somebody that understood that and was okay with that and truly okay with that. It wasn't like they just blew smoke up my ass saying, okay, I'm good with that. It's like, no, no, no. Like you don't understand. Are you going to be okay waking up every morning and getting a good morning text and then not getting another text until nighttime, until 8, 9 p.m., going 12 hours in a day without getting a single text from me? Not because I don't like you, not because I'm ignoring you, not because I'm on my phone doing other stuff, but it's because I'm just working. Like it's what I enjoy doing. Like I want to spend my time doing the things that I love to do. And for me, that's balance. That's balance. It's what I do with my time, which is fine and great. But like, especially when I'm at school and I'm not home over winter break or summer break and just chilling, like I'm just working all day, which is fine. But like, how can I have a relationship with somebody that isn't going to understand that where, Hey, the way that this relationship is going to work is we're going to have a date night and then we're going to have maybe two or three times a week where we actually spend good time together. And I'm going to be there and I'm going to be present. I'm not going to be working. I'm not going to be doing bullshit. I'm not going to be on my phone. I'm not going to be fucking around. I'm going to be there with you when I'm with you. We're going to spend good time together. But then when I'm out doing my own thing, I'm doing my own thing. I can't have my attention spread thin because this is the way I enjoy to live my life. And this is balanced for me. And it's not balanced for everybody. And that's fine. Some people, you know, just want to sit back and watch TikToks as they lay in bed with their significant other, which is great. Do that. I don't care. I'm not telling you what you should or shouldn't do. I'm just saying for you to think that you should have a dictation or you should have a significant say on what your partner does with his or her time is a bit ludicrous. It's a bit far-fetched. In a relationship, should you have to compromise? Absolutely. So maybe I'm not working every day, all day, you know? Maybe I need to get, give up a couple work hours sometimes here and there to give a quick FaceTime call or, or whatever it is that, that I should be doing to, to compromise. Agreed. There is a certain level to that. But the biggest part of it is going to be learning to be in a relationship with the type of person you want to be in a relationship with. And if you don't want to be in a relationship with somebody that works their ass off all day, don't get into a relationship with a person that works their ass off all day. If you get into a relationship with, with a dude that's super entrepreneurial and is working on building a business and has a million things going on in his life, why are you going to get upset when you're not getting text? When you're not, why are you going to get upset when you're not getting texts all day and not getting FaceTime calls all day and he's not sending you funny memes on Instagram all day, like, why are you going to get upset about it? You knew what you were getting into when you were getting into it. This is your fault. But then a lot of people will never really look at me and be like, dude, that's crazy. Like, some pe you shouldn't be working that many hours a day. It's like, should you or should you not? I'm not telling you what you should or shouldn't do. I'm just telling you if you're going to be in a, in a healthy relationship, you shouldn't be trying to tell the other person what they should or shouldn't be doing with their time. You shouldn't be trying to make them feel guilty for, for doing what to them is making them happy because you want time. That's so selfish. Don't get into that relationship. And not for nothing, let's say, you're the type of, let's say I get into a relationship with somebody. And I enjoy flat out working 14 hours a day. That's what I enjoy doing. And then I get into a relationship with this person and this person now is getting super upset because I'm not texting them or calling them all day and, I'm, and they don't want me to be working all day because they want my time, they want my energy, they want my effort, they want, to, they want my attention. And then let's say I follow through and do that. I'm now working, you know, six, seven hours a day and the rest I'm spending with them and, and trying to talk to them and trying to please them and trying to text them and call them and send them the memes that they want to be sent and give them the attention that they want to be sent. How is that going to make me feel about that person? I'm going to resent the living shit out of that person because my whole life is now being compromised and I'm not fulfilling my balance. I'm not fulfilling my life because of somebody else's desire for my attention in a relationship. I'm now going to hate that person. I'm not going to like you. I'm not going to like someone that you compromise your whole life spending trying to please because and, and then putting your desires to the side for. You're not. Obviously, you're not. So don't get into a relationship with the person that you know for a fact isn't going to be the right fit for you because they can give you enough time and energy and effort and attention. That I respect. Like if you need more attention, 
you're not the type of person that I can have a good relationship with. You're just not because you're going to have to deal with the fact that most of the day I'm going to be working and I'm not going to compromise on that. I'm not. It's just what I enjoy doing. This is my fulfillment. I feel good doing this. This is what balance is to me. What balance is to other people is what balance is to other people. But for you to get into a relationship and then expect somebody else to start spending less time doing what they love and spending more time giving you attention and energy and effort because you want that time and energy and effort is completely insane. You should want your partner to do what's good for them first and then have them give you their attention, love, energy. And sometimes those things are going to overlap. Sometimes it's going to be they want to spend time with you. I hope they do. If you're in a good relationship, the person's going to want to give you time and energy and effort. But that doesn't mean they, they always will. But that doesn't always mean that it's right for you to say that you should be getting more time and energy and effort. Now, there are cases, I should make a big note of this because what I just mentioned was probably the minority of people, but there are cases where you should be getting more attention and energy and effort and you're not. And what do you do in those situations? In my eyes, the first thing you need to audit is yourself. Are you the type of person that your partner is going to want to spend time around? And if you're not... Why are you even asking the question? It's a stupid question. I can't believe he doesn't want to spend time with me. Would you want to spend time with you if you were in his shoes or vice versa? Let's say every time he comes home, all you're doing is bitching and nagging him and complaining about, you know, how shitty your day was at work and, and being so negative and just, you know, he never does this and, and telling him, oh, God, can you just do this? Or why do you always leave a mess here? Like, are, would you want to spend time with you? If every single time you go out on a date, all you're doing is sitting there silently or or you don't want to do anything besides complain about the other person and get into an argument, like, would you want to spend time with you? The problem isn't them. The problem is you. Chances are you're both just as shitty. But if you want the other person to spend more time with you, become a person that more people would want to spend more time with. Brilliant. <laughs> Work on yourself. Work on becoming a more pleasant human being. Work on being somebody that you would want to spend time around if you were in their shoes. And then your partner might get off the video game and start spending more time with you because they'll want to spend time with you. You shouldn't try and be into submission, your partner, to go on a date with you or to go hang out with you or do anything with you or give you their attention. It should come naturally. They should come spend time with you because they want to. They should call you because they want to. If you're in a relationship where somebody's always texting and calling you consistently because they know that if they don't, you're going to yell at them, that's not a good relationship. You're holding a bat over their head saying, text me and call me, otherwise I'm going to be pissed. What the fuck is that? You're not in a healthy relationship. You're not in a position where you're actually getting their attention. You're getting their fear. It's almost like it's a non-conversation. It, it almost feels that way because I feel like, I mean, maybe there's some cases where there's an exception, but people who are in relationships where you're getting the right amount of attention that's making you fulfilled are the type of people that aren't going to be bitching and complaining and being annoying. Like good relationships are between good people. Shitty relationships are usually between shitty people. And that's just the way it usually works. And then there's a, there's obviously a spectrum there. It's not like good relationships and bad relationships There's there's obviously a spectrum to it, but like, I don't know. It's almost a non-starter because if you truly work on yourself and you're truly confident, you're going to attract the right people into your life. And when you attract the right people into your life, you're going to have a good relationship. And when you have a good relationship, you don't have to worry about and you don't ask the question, how do I get more attention from my partner? Because A, you're going to be the type of person that is likable and the other person's going to want to spend time with you. But B, you're going to be in a good, healthy relationship where you respect the other person's time and energy and they respect yours so that this usually isn't a problem. You'll just have the conversation like, hey, you know what? Haven't seen you in a while. Can we can we talk soon? I know you like to work, but can we have a day soon? And the other person's going to say, of course, because you're in a good relationship. Like it's almost it, it, it's almost ridiculous to even bring up the conversation because it's a hypothetical that probably never happens. Maybe it does. And if it does, I hope I help one of you. But yeah. The last thing I wanted to bring up was a story that somebody had told me um, and they were just asking for my input and some advice on it. So I thought maybe you can get something out of this. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? But I'll share it anyways. So this girl came up to me and she's in college and she has a boyfriend here as well. And there was a big argument that broke out. And what they were arguing about was this guy that she is friends with because this guy that she's friends with used to really like her. Um, and they never had hooked up or dated or anything like that, but he used to like her and want to hit on her and whatnot. And the problem was she would hang out with this guy. I mean, they didn't even hang out one-on-one, -on -one, but he told her, you know, you can't be hanging out with this dude. He used to like you. Um, I don't want you to spend time with him, yada, yada. And it caused a bunch of problems because 
he, he was friends with mutual friends and she wasn't spending time with any of the, the people that she wanted to spend time with because he was trying to control her because that one guy was going to be around. But here was the problem. The problem is if you were in a relationship with somebody and they're telling you who you can and can't spend time with, it's for one of two reasons. Either A, they don't trust you, which is obviously a big problem, or B, they're not confident in themselves. It's one of the two or both. It can only be those things because if they actually trust you, and but they still are telling you who, to, who and who not to hang around, then it's because they're insecure. And they're insecure because if they lost you, their sense of self-worth would be gone. And only insecure people are attaching their sense of self-worth to relationships. That's the truth. And so if you're actually in a relationship where that person actually trusts you to go and spend time or go out to a club or go out to a bar, go hang around a group of friends where there's that one guy or one girl that used to like you or that you used to date or whatever, and they're super insecure and they're super adamant about the fact that you shouldn't be going if you were a good girlfriend or if you were a good boyfriend, then the only reason they're telling you that is because A, they don't trust you to go out and not flirt with them or not do something stupid or not cheat on them or B or both they're too insecure to deal with the fact mentally that where you're going to be in an environment where somebody else is going to maybe be flirting with you or whatever whatever's going to run through their mind they're, they're too insecure to deal with that fact because if something were to happen they wouldn't be okay alone and that's the real problem because if you were confident in yourself you'd be okay alone and again being okay alone doesn't mean if someone broke up with you that you'd be like oh it's fine i'm okay alone i'm confident that's not what that means what it means is if you actually got broken up with eventually you'd be okay alone because you love yourself and you're okay with just you. You don't need anybody in your life. Everybody's a good addition, of course. And if, and if you lost a loved one, it doesn't mean you wouldn't feel the pain. But you love yourself. So you're okay with just you. Is it nice to spend time with other people and people that you love? Of course. But if you love yourself, you're good. You are good. But the irony is when you're okay alone, that's when the healthiest relationships flourish. Because you don't need anybody else. You're good. And the people that love themselves are good communicators. They're emotionally available. They trust. They love. They don't, you know, set unnecessary boundaries. They're not, they're not trying to control anybody because they're good. They don't need anybody. So why would they try and control someone, right? Let's say, you know, you're starving and you have a certain food ration that you have. Like maybe, maybe, let's say you have a loaf of bread a week, right? And that's the only food you have for the entire week. You're going to do anything and everything in your power to make sure nothing happens to that loaf of bread. You don't want that loaf of bread getting into places where, you know, maybe somebody might take a bite or you don't want anybody to be in the kitchen where they can have access to that loaf of bread because they're hungry too or whatever. Like that's how relationships are when somebody's insecure. Because if that person goes out to a bar or goes out to a club or goes out into a social situation where they know they might get hit on, it's like their loaf of bread. <laughs> that's how they feel about it. Because if anything happens to that loaf of bread, they're gone. There's nothing left. But the people that are confident in themselves have an abundance of food. It doesn't matter. They feel good. There's no need to try and cling on to this one person because they're good. They'd be okay alone. Their sense of self-worth isn't attached to the loaf of bread, or in this case, that other person, or that relationship, or that whatever, fill in the blank. Truly confident people only have their sense of self-worth attached to who they are, who they know they are, which comes from treating yourself like you're loving yourself taking care of your body, taking care of your finances, taking care of your career, having a good relationship with your creator or God or however you align yourself spiritually. These things really matter. And when you're confident with yourself, which is from the habits that you implement, then you're good in a relationship. It's the truth. There are no relationships where there are two truly confident people where they go and try and force the other person to not go out to a bar or a club or force the other person to not hang out with a certain somebody because they're good. Because when you're confident, you're good. You have no desire to tell the other person what they can or can't do, what they can or can't wear, whatever. That controlling aspect goes away because they love themselves. Therefore, they let the other person do whatever it is that they want to do because they'd be okay alone. That's the truth. So... Thank you very much for tuning in to episode number 28 of the Jason Sklora Show. If you enjoyed it, let me know. If you have any questions, let me know. If you don't want to like or subscribe, that's good. If you do, then that's good too. I don't really care, to be honest. I'm putting this out there for you. I'm putting this out there for the viewer because I want you to live a better life and I want you to have a better relationship. And if there's anything that I can do or say or whatever to help you in that process, then that's why I post these. So... With that said, love yourself because I love you and stay handsome. Peace.